Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Chris Jurgen. He's a commercial real estate professional. He's been in it for 30 years, and he focuses on creating spaces for small businesses. I have Karen Loomis. She has 20 years experience as a marketing and branding professional. She is the founder at No Moss Brand, and she is an adjunct professor at the Grand Canyon University. She is very passionate about social change. Finally, I have Brandon Mahoney. He is the co-founder of LaunchPoint Labs. It's a startup studio at Early Venture Funds, where he is an expert in creating sales departments. The question that I have for the three of you, what is entitlement? Karen, you seem like the ideal person to kick this off being a professor. Go ahead. There's no way I can look at entitlement without connecting it to race in my world. One of the things that's interesting as I started writing this book and started to kind of pull in information from other Blacks is that we have this issue of being invisible, meaning we could be in a retail location, we could be standing in line somewhere, and we will inevitably be looked over when it comes to who's next. And so growing up that way, I've always had this kind of chip on my shoulder of when I walk in a place, who's first, who's second, who's third, and I keep that. And so that I can make sure that if I need to step up and say, actually, I was next, mm -hmm. that I have the voice to do that and to be able to do that. And so entitlement comes in not only um, a discriminatory, I mean, it couldn't be from skin color. It could be on based on intelligence. It could be based on class. And so there this aspect of entitlement that is really kind of roaming um, the social media world where we talk about people who are specifically looking at it from a race perspective and calling them Karens, which happens to be my name, of course, which is even funnier. It's all about, I think that when we have a Karen, when we call somebody a Karen, it's all about them feeling entitled to something. And that is where the hairs on the back of my neck stand up because we are all equal, first come, first serve, that kind of philosophy. And nobody's need should super plant somebody else's. So that's kind of where I look at entitlement. I come from a country where entitlement was sort of the birth of entitlement. Mm. And there's obviously the, the legal terminology of what entitlement is. And, and then there's the social. I came from a relatively privileged background. There's sort of an entitlement that goes with that. And it's wrong. But mm. um, uh, as Karen said, we're all equal and we should all have um, the same social entitlement, that we're equal. Mm. And um, unfortunately, even in this country, there's a class up there that considers themselves more entitled than others. But um, nobody's really entitled to anything but equality. That's really the, the baseline for me. It's sad that uh, there's a lot of people, younger people today who do feel entitled to a lot of stuff that they're not really entitled to but I can see Karen's perspective though that's that's kind of a different angle growing up uh, I came from the opposite side where I think hey I'm entitled <laughs> mm. but you know you're really not um, I think it's part of growing up uh, going from sort of uh, childhood through teenage years and then actually becoming an adult and realizing you're not entitled to anything but what you earn. Mm, I love that word, earn. So it's it's interesting. I don't think it's going to be any surprise that my perspective is going to be different than, than Karen's. I'm an arguably successful white male. And so I grew up from a lens of everyone is equal. Everyone has, is entitled to all the same things, but that's clearly not what you actually see when you're out mm. in the real world. Um, when we talk about those, like the Karen videos where somebody is yelling at the manager and feels like they're deserving of more than what everyone else is deserving of, I used to watch those videos and get so annoyed with the Karen, but anymore, I get annoyed with the individuals just standing around allowing it to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, why is nobody saying something in, in, in better, for less of a better word, phrase, or put them in their place? Why allow that to keep going? I've been in that situation where someone has been behaving that way and carrying on, and I have stepped in. It's hard when they turn that wrath on you. Now, <laughs> fortunately for me, I'm like, you've lost your mind. But I can definitely see how most people would not want to step in when someone is absolutely going Karen on someone. Stepping into that is dangerous. One of the things, the classes that I teach is called Media Law and Ethics. 
And so I spend a lot of time on the ethics side and I, I preface everything with there's not a right or a wrong answer to any of this, but more than anything, you have a voice mm -hmm. and to use your voice and to encourage them to use their voice, whether that means they're complaining about their grade, you can complain all you want. Sometimes it'll make a difference. Sometimes it won't. You're not entitled to a change just because you use your voice, but your voice is your power. And that's one of the things that people tend to forget is how powerful their voices really are when they are needling for something really ridiculous, like they want to be in line in front of you. I'm wondering, because there's obviously, to your point, Karen, you have to have a voice that says, I'm entitled to respect and I'm entitled to the same treatment as everyone else. So you have to have a voice, but then you can get into going farther and beyond, well, I am special, I, rules don't apply to me, I'm entitled to di special dispensation. Where is that line and how do you determine, okay, yes, you are entitled to general respect and being treated as an equal, no, you're not entitled to special dispensation. Ah, uh, that's a great question. I mean, I think that um, I'm going to go back a little bit to, and I can't remember which one of the two gentlemen made a comment about it, but I think that the understanding that you aren't entitled, I think is directly correlated to your emotional IQ. Mm. The better you are to handle all of these kinds of little things that happen all day long. Hopefully you're building this emotional intelligence to handle all of these social interactions that we have. And, and I will say there's days I don't have very high emotional IQ. I just want to lash out. But then mm -hmm. there are other days where I want to come at it from a very intellectual perspective because I know that that's the only way things are going to get changed. But in your example, Robin, I'm the one looking around going, Guess I'm going to have to be the one again to stand up. And I think that comes from having a confidence in your voice, mm -hmm. whether it changes the world or not, being confident in your stance and your ability to say enough already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but th those situations where you come across someone who's totally unreasonable and is sort of having a temper tantrum, <laughs> um, there's nothing you can really do to nope. change that person's uh, disposition. Nope. So is it wise to engage? It's like dealing with someone who's not mentally 100% um, and they're going to lash out and misbehave. <laughs> it, de it depends upon what's happening. Like if they're lashing out at someone that I feel like is not in a position to be able to, to defend stand themselves. up for themselves yeah. and defend yeah. themselves, no, then no, I feel like I am obligated to step in and say, hey, and at least turn the, the barrel toward me because I'm more able to handle it in a way that, that that's been my experience if i see someone behaving that way and i feel like the person they're doing it to can't defend themselves then i feel like i should step in i think that comes from you know that high, that place of having a high emotional iq robin i mean clearly mm -hmm. you do and that gives you the ability to consciously make decisions pros and cons run all those things quickly through your head which to Chris's point, when somebody's in outrage, when we have a toddler that's having a temper, temper tantrum, my approach is walk away. Let them have their temper tantrum. Let them get that energy out. But when it impacts other people, which is right. what entitlement is all about, is mm -hmm. thinking you are better than somebody else or you deserve more or you deserve something different than what other people, that's when I, that's when I get a little feisty and I'll worry mm -hmm. about the consequences after. Mm hmm. Brandon, are you one to step in? I, I think it, 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 it depends. So if it's like a situation where it's like a, a toddler having a temper tantrum, I completely agree. Walk away. Usually when I see situations arise, though, it's generally at restaurants. It's at like a, a fast food place where they're yelling at, a, at an employee. And to me, yeah, you absolutely step in. Not only is that you know employee unable to defend themselves because they are representing their company and they don't want to lose their job and they very easily could mm. for even even just defending themselves, but it's like you're having a bad day. You go in there and you treat the people there with like with such little respect, and it's like why? Like why would you do that? It's I don't care how bad your day is. Yeah, I think entitlement is something that we hear the word a lot, but we don't do a good job of putting boundaries around it because I love that what we've come up with that everyone is entitled to the same amount of respect and then anything above that, then you're not entitled to that. And finding that line as we've 
realized is really difficult. So thank you for having this conversation with me. And I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon.